we're a precipitation enhancement company. This tech has existed since 1946 in its most crude form. Americans invented it accidentally. They were doing some cloud chamber experiments, spilled dry ice into it, saw that all of the liquid water in their controlled cloud froze and precipitated at the bottom and realized that you could just go out into a plane, fly into a cloud. It was 1946. There were no regulations. Huck dry ice out of the back, freeze the liquid in the cloud, make it snow. And so the first man-made snowstorms were made in like 45, 46. Crazy. General Hell Electric yeah. doubled down, did a lot of investment in it. And this technology, it showed so much promise because like the implications of weather are enormous across every industry. But it fell off in the 70s, 80s and onward because nobody had the ability to, one, do it very cost effectively or two, attribute the precipitation to their interventions. What that means is like if you spray some fairy dust in a cloud and then it rains, that doesn't mean that you caused it to rain. Even if you accept on whiteboard math that that precipitation wasn't natural, measuring how much precipitation you produced anthropogenically was impossible. You could do like a statistical analysis and say like, well, the seeded clouds precipitated a bit more than, than the untreated ones, but it wasn't robust. What changed was the Snowy Project, which was this research effort between a lot of American universities, realized if you have high resolution radar, then if you fly in say a zigzag pattern or in a spiral, if the precipitation enhancement is working, Working, you should be able to co-locate the precipitation on radar with your flight track. And that's exactly what they observed between 2017 and 2021 when some of the last analyses came out. Then a lab in Zurich recapitulated this, proved that it could be done again. That was in 2023. And when I had found that out, I was like, oh, this is now finally doable and you can transparently tell your end users how much water you're producing for them. So this is an obvious thing that we should be investing in. So that's when I started Rainmaker. And what we do is we take radar data and satellite data to try to measure the amount of supercooled liquid in clouds. If the droplets are sufficiently small that they're not naturally precipitating, we'll fly drones up into them, spray a compound called silver iodide, freeze the water in that cloud into snowflakes that become big enough and heavy enough to fall and then precipitate either as snow or, or stay as rain. And 